Hello everybody, this is Mark Bodman. This is going to be a short overview on how we manage getting your services in the right place on the platform to align better with CSDM. I'm going to start out with a quick overview of what I mean. The current CSDM shows you a difference between three key service types. One is technical service here on the left, application service in the middle, and business services over here on the right. What we find is many organizations historically have used just one service type to represent any of or in all of these things. In the current CSDM structure, however, we have separated those out into a different table structure. Many organizations aren't aware of this, and so this is kind of getting into some of the details behind that and how you can fairly quickly and easily get your services into the right structures. So here you'll see the technical services that we talk about at the CSDM level and the physical model that is used underneath the hood. And you can see that the name of this particular class is really in the CI, CMDB CI service technical class. We also have a legacy attribute, okay, where you have service classification can be chosen and that there's three options by default, technical application and, and business services but we're trying to get rid of the need for using this classification altogether. It is duplicative of a CI class structure and it can often be in conflict with the CI class structures. So long-term you wanna get away from using classification on services. It's still used on offering, so we won't cover that one today, but when you create an offering, it still requires and uses the classification because we don't have different types of offering in our case. Uh, it's a link to its parent service, the way we, we manage them. Application services have many different classes it can land in. So there's a lot more complexity in converting to an app service. Initially, you would convert to the base class, but if you have a tags based thing or a using service mapping, there's a different process for that you might want to use and get it into a service mapping class. So, But we do allow the, the conversion to that and we'll show you that in a minute. For the business service class, same thing. So it's a specific table structure just for business services and the classification is still there, but if you use this method, you don't necessarily need that and you wanna get rid of using classification as well. Moving over to my instance, what I'm looking at right here is my services inventory on my system. This is the base service class. To get there, you just search for services and under service portfolio management, you'll see the services based class. You'll also see the business and technical services. This is where we wanna put those services uh, in there, or if there's an app service, we'll show you that one as well, but it's, it's really not under SPM here. So this is a list of all my services, and you'll, I'm gonna pick on attendance management de uh, service dev. This one is an obvious app service because it does indicate that it is a dev environment. And when I look at it in the form, you're gonna see some attributes around uh, that we were just talking about. First one is really the service classification. It is an app service, obviously. It was also in the previous thing. And it does link to the business application and capabilities uh, above that. So you do want to convert this to a true app service. So there's three things I want to show you on this form. So however you want to take this next, there are a couple of automation processes you can leverage. The first one is uh, this convert to application service. This will take the, your base service class element, which is supposed to be an app service, and put it in the app service structure proper. When you click on this, what it does is it provides a couple of settings. Um, you can adjust the name if you need to, and this is going to add some additional details so I keep track of it. Uh, and you could also say how many levels deep do you want this app service to go? And when you start the conversion, it will actually create the right app service entity in the model and basically move everything over to the app service entity. So this is gonna happen in the background. Some of these app services can be very large depending on the number of relationships that you have established, but this is gonna uh, take you through that process. Now, there is a bulk services co conversion option as well. Uh, I'm not gonna go through that. that. There's help in the help documentation. If you have a lot of them, that you can just convert all in a batch. 
but this is uh, available to you as well. So coming back to the services list here, uh, that was a simple example of how to convert it over. The other example I wanted to take you through, if you look at this list, um, you, you can see that I don't have the, the CI classification. There is a view here. I can look at those as well in the default view. And you can see we have the classifications shown and I can get it maybe if I've been using this historically, I can use this as an indicator for what it is. So let's go to this benefits withholding. And for this one, because it does have a classification business service, I can assume that it is a, a business service proper. So when I click on this button, it goes through a similar process, but it's a lot more lightweight. It's not as heavy as converting to an app service. But when I convert this over, it will go through a process of taking all, all of the, the this and in, in just changing the classification and putting it in the right table structure. So from here, you could go right into the service builder. I installed the service builder. The service builder is a plugin that you get from the store. If it's installed, you can actually use the service builder to manage this now that it's in the right table structure. Service builder, I have a whole video on service builder. I'll drop a link to that here at this point in the video. But this one right here, when you go into service builder, this gives you a nicer user experience to continue to flesh out the attributes that you may not have ever used or get some advice on how to set up the services. I really love Service Builder and I would encourage you to use Service Builder wherever you can. Uh, some interesting additions to the feature is that it can be modified now. It can be tailored to your expectations if there's certain attributes you don't want folks to, to, to use. You can take those out. So there's some tailoring you can do to this. That's not recorded on the video. The video is about a year old, but take that into account. You can actually go ahead and do that. There's also links to edit business capabilities if you have the permission to do that too. And then of course, going down into the offerings, this is gonna create the child offerings related to that business service and establish all the right relationships. So a key, a key thing Service Builder does for you it, it does establish all the right attributes, all the right relationships, according to CSDM guidance and uh, all the best practices that have been captured here. So coming back to my list of services, you'll see that the number of services keeps going down because I'm putting them into the right classes. And I recommend this is a very simple, easy approach. My default view <laughs> keeps coming back to something else. I like the default view here because I can see my classification. So if I've got a lot of information already set up, I can go ahead and use this. Our demo data is not aligned, as you can see, perfectly with the guidance in CSDM. That's a gap you're going to see if you do use or look at our demos. Just keep that in mind. And I uh, just want to make sure that you do understand that there's, there's a lot of bad data out there. I would suggest adding some health checks to make sure that you're getting everything out of the base service class. If anything is there, obviously it's something you still need to move. So putting some health checks in there to make sure that those are covered and you're working through this list is a good way of uh, making sure you're conforming and using CSDM, but also some of the new products like Service Builder, which really take advantage of the additional tailoring of the of the data model to, so, so to handle the different types of services. So that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to leave you with that quick tip. You know, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you can reach out at mark.bodman at servicenow.com or reach out on LinkedIn. I'm available to answer more questions.